today. Honorable Justice S.A. Bobdi, Judge, Supreme Court of India. Honorable Dr. Justice D.Y. Chandrachud, Judge, Supreme Court of India. Honorable Justice Shri A.R. Dave, former Judge of Supreme Court of India. Justice Varaiva, Justice B.N. Sri Krishna, Justice Sujata Manoha. Justice C.K. Thakka, Justice H.L. Gokhale, former judges of the Supreme Court, Attorney General, Mr. Rohatigi, distinguished Chief Justices, Justice Bounsley and Justice Vazivda, my distinguished colleagues in the Bombay High Court, former Chief Justices of Bombay High Court, Mr. Ramjeet Malani, former Judges of the Bombay High Court, Distinguished President, Dr. Milind Sati, Mr. Nitin Tucker, Vice President of Bombay Bar Association, Dr. Saraf, Secretary of the Bombay Bar Association, Advocate General, Mr. Anil Singh, Additional Solicitor General of India, Mr. Rajiv Chavan, President of AAWI, Government Leaders, Distinguished Senior. to be part of this function, being the present Chief Justice of High Court of Bombay during the year when Sesqui Sentinel of the Bombay Bar Association is being celebrated. The High Courts, Indian High Courts Act of 1861 was enacted by the British Parliament and Her Majesty, the Queen issued letters patent establishing the Bombay High Court on 14th August 1862. It's uh, more than 150 years. 150 years is not a small number in one's lifetime, we may not see so many numbers. We may come across celebrations of centenary and sesquicentenary, but being an institution, the institution is witnessing the sesquicentenary year and the celebrations of this Bombay Bar Association. When I came to Bombay in the month of August this year, my impression of the building was very great. I must say I had goose pimples to see the building of the High Court. And my feeling was similar when I entered my chambers and my court hall, which was adorned by Justice Chadla, the first uh, Chief Justice after independence of India. When the bar started addressing me, I realized it's not just the building, the bar is as magnificent as the building is. That's the impression I got. How beautiful the building, carvings, sculptures, pictures, especially, especially the central court hall. How wonderful and magnificent with all the sculpture around, with the 
magnificent lights, the height of the building, the center doom, memes. That depicts how carefully the plan was laid to make the building look so magnificent, graceful, elegant, and dignified, and dignified. Along with the building and the courts, because it's handled by mostly the larger number of people who are responsible for the growth of anything is lawyers, like how the building was constructed, I am sure, step by step, stage by stage, each stone, how it was thought and laid, the culture of the bar, the heritage of this bar has grown. That's what I could gather from the president's address, Mr. Sate's address, how beautifully it is planned, visualized, and implemented, the building. Similarly, the bar grew along with that so well, and it is stands number one bar today in the country. When, when people heard that I'm coming to Bombay as Chief Justice, the reaction from my native place was, ah, oh, wonderful. That was the reaction. They felt very happy about it. And they felt that it was a honor to the Bar Association of Bellari. That was the expression they felt. Any institution, any country, if it has achieved something, it speaks about the people who are part of its growth. If somebody talks about Bombay High Court, Bombay Bar, it's all the people who are part of the institution, how they visualized, how they thought, how they improved, how they have achieved that great pedestal, what we are occupying today. Look at the struggle they had. When the bar was formed, especially Bombay Bar used to be the lawyers of practicing mainly on original side. It used to be only the Europeans. There was a lot of hesitance and struggle for an Indian to enter. To enter Bombay Bar, being Indians, it must have been real struggle with, unless they have so much of confidence, self-confidence in themselves, they couldn't have competed. But once having entered, they made the Europeans, they made the European judges realize that we are nothing less than them, rather we are better than them. That was the recognition this bar could show them, and that's how Bahadur, Raja Rao Bahadur was invited pre-independence. He was made the uh, judge of this court. The history, the narration, how the bar contributed to to the legal field of this country, Mr. Satya gave with precision all the details, statistics, I must say, right from the beginning, how many judges were given from this bar to the Supreme Court and other legal illuminaries, how many became chief justices of this Supreme Court court and how many judges from here have taken another other forms of representing the 
legal field. That shows the hard work put in. That shows the enthusiasm with which they have taken the challenge. That shows the commitment with which they have contributed to the cause of the task they have undertaken. Is it enough for us to think that what, what we had done, what we have achieved so far? Should we not take the past experience, the past achievements as foundation for much better future? Are we doing it? Are we doing it? Is it happening? What was, we were at ro crossroads when the struggle to farm the bar, when struggle for the locals to enter the bar, we heard the struggle. But everything is ours now as on today. It is our, the government we have chosen, the government we have elected, it's all Indians, it's all our people, our country people, our kith and kin. Are we in a better condition than what it used to be? Uh, can we say that we have no problems? Can we say that there are no challenges? Is it not the reality that we have more challenges than what they had? Is it not a fact that we are required to contribute much better, much with much more vigor and vision to see that at least the past reputation what we have achieved till today is not disappearing, is not going to be wiped off. Is, is it not our duty to see that we keep up the traditions, we keep up the values of life? How a profession could be, or a professional could be said that he is excellent, very good in his profession, and he discharges duties with efficiency and commitment. Is it enough? Should they not be coupled with values of life? Unless we maintain values of life, no profession, no occupation can be said as excellent. Without values of life, nothing can be good. It will be only theoretical and not practical. Unless values of life are maintained, nurtured, and unless we have the feeling for the fellow human being. Unless we react and respond to the present situation, we will not be able to hold with the strength that reputation we have acquired till date, that glory we have achieved, and that victory what we are boasting ourselves today, saying that, we have done this, we have done that. It, 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 this celebration is, according to me, is a challenge to the present younger generation. It is a challenge to the upcoming lawyers. It's a challenge to the entire legal field here. Look at this, how much you have contributed, how many judges you have contributed, how many wonderful lawyers you have contributed, how many struggles you have undergone, how many fights you have undergone to bring good to the society and the country and the field, legal field. Unless you realize that I belong, unless you feel that I belong to an institution which has achieved till day all this and it's my duty to take it forward. And it's my duty to take it forward unless that commitment is there. It will not 
be good. Therefore, the young members of the bar have to make sure and, and they have to determine today, they have to take a oath that yes. Actually, it's always said that if there is a very good lawyer, senior lawyer, and when his son or daughter enters the profession, the child comes back and says, it's real struggle for me because everyone compares me with you. They always look at them, whether he's as good as his father or whether she's as good as his brother, or whether she's as good as his. It becomes much more responsibility and onerous struggle for the youngster. That's what the present bar has to face today. And that's what your task seems to be. And you owe a duty to see that the traditions which were nurtured till now, the glory you are enjoying till now, is held like that carefully and it's not dropped from there. That's what the determination we should have. And I'm sure the senior members of the bar would definitely see that such commitment is inculcated in the younger generation of the bar. It's not one person's responsibility. It is not individual person's duty. It is collective duty of all of us to see that what we had achieved must be the past experience must be our foundation to achieve further and go to higher levels and another after another 25 years we must be able to proudly say that from 150 years to 175 years from 175 to double century we have done double the progress, double the victory, double achievement, and enhanced our image in the country, and Bombay, and Bombay Bar, and for that matter, I was just talking to Justice Bobde, my brother. Is it just Bombay Bar or entire Maharashtra? Should we always think of just Bombay Bar? Is it not entire Maharashtra we should think of. When we think of Bar Association, Bombay Bar Association, yes, Bombay Bar, it's there. But should it not be a role model to other bars in the state of Maharashtra? What is it being done to the other bars in the state of Maharashtra? What is it you are contributing? Everybody talks of huge areas, huge pendency, and if all of you commit yourself and if you determine that this huge pendency has to come down, is it not possible for you to take such a determination? Is it not possible for all of us to sit together and see that the pendency comes down? Why alternative dispute resolution is introduced? Why section 89 was made a statutory obligation? Now, Mr. Sate was talking about commercial courts. Yes, another designation to one more court as commercial court original division with the same infrastructure. How does we solve the problem? How does it happen? Unless the infrastructure is improved, unless the commercial courts are established for the purpose, how it should be established with all the infrastructure, is it possible to do? It is not possible. Therefore, the lawyers, the members of the bar must assist the courts to see that the pendency comes down. How does it comes down? You assist and cooperate for alternative dispute resolution mechanism. So try to, I keep saying this, try to filter the cases which don't need much time which don't need our attention, which doesn't need any interpretation. Once those cases go away, 
concentrate on the good work, put your efforts, assist the courts to see that new interpretation could be done and how we can face the challenges and how we find the solution for the challenges. Every day, new challenge comes, how we find out. Instead of fighting for the same case which could be settled otherwise for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, for maintenance of 1,000 rupees, how many days the lady has to come? For compensation in a motor accident cases, how many times they have to come? Look at the eviction petitions, 30 years, 40 years they are pending. The building is dilapidated condition on one side, the building is collapsing. The matter is pending for 10 years. Is it not possible to find a solution for all these? The courts had only 500 to 700 cases when it started in 1919, I think. And now look at the pendency. Look at the pendency. If this is going to be allowed, are we not going to be crushed under the heavy pendency and burden? Is, will it not affect our reputation? Will it not create a dent in the good reputation we have achieved till date? Think on these issues. Take the cue from what we were for, what we are happy about it, for what we have achieved, and plan for better tomorrow.